So far, we've learned to analyze just the weld material itself. But when you're analyzing welded joints, you also need to analyze the attachment between the weld material, the filler, and the base metal. And the base metal itself, the rest of the part, can't forget that. Now, for fillet welds in particular, you think, well, the for the weld, we were analyzing the cross-sectional area here along this uh, the throat thickness. But when we're analyzing the attachment, what we're looking at is between the fillet weld and the base metal here, we're kind of looking at this interface. And we are also interested in this interface. And you think, oh, well, they have a larger area, so shouldn't they be fine if the fillet weld was fine? Well, the fillet weld material is uh, often the strongest material that's uh, present. So let's say that these parts have 1018 cold drawn steel, and we're, we're going to need to take a look and see whether uh, that material can hold up at that interface. Uh, another thing is that the weld material, the strength that you have of, you know, what is it, 60, 70, 80 KSI, uh, that, that's correct for that material. But if you had 1018 cold drawn as the base metal, you think, oh, I get to use the cold drawn properties of the part, which are higher than the uh, hot rolled properties of that metal. Uh, you can't quite do that. Welding in the local region heats up that material to a point where it gets annealed. So any cold working that was done that increases the yield strength of the material, uh, you've got to assume that that's no longer valid and it could still yield at the uh, original hot rolled properties or annealed properties. And then also sometimes you need to analyze the material that's far away, uh, even out of the heat affected zone, maybe you are attaching in a large, you've got a large attachment, lots of area there, the, depending on the geometry, and you could have less area out here, a smaller cross section that's handling the load. And basically, you need to make sure that you need to remember to analyze the rest of your part. It's not just all about the weld. So the purpose of this video is to take a look at this example and analyze not just the welds, well, we've already done that, we're going to analyze the attachment between the welds and the part and the part itself. So here were our tips that we had before, but we're going to have to modify them slightly uh, down towards the bottom here. So one new rule that we have is that the normal stresses should be less than or equal to 0.6 times the yield strength of really any material involved. So you need to make sure that the stresses in the weld are less than 0.6 times the yield strength of the weld material, but you also need to make sure that at the attachment and far away from the attachment in the part itself, you want to keep the normal stresses below 0.6 times the yield strength of that material. So we're going to have different material properties. SY doesn't always refer to, when it depends on what we're analyzing. If we're analyzing the weld, we're going to use the welded materials property. Uh, if we're analyzing the attachment, there could be some base metal that's kind of mixed in with the weld material at that attachment point, and it could be could have been annealed in the process of welding by being heated up, so you can't assume the stronger cold worked properties. You have to use the lower annealed or hot rolled properties. And then far away from that welded region, you're also in the base metal, going to want to use the base metal's properties. And also shear stresses, this is new should be less than or equal to 0.4 times the yield strength of the base material. So even for the weld, when you're analyzing the welds, you want to stay less than 30% of the ultimate tensile strength of the weld material. For analyzing the shear stresses in the attachment point, say, you want to stay less than 40% of the yield strength of the base material. So here again is our problem. We have a transverse fillet weld. It's called transverse because the length of the weld is perpendicular to the direction of the applied load. And we want to analyze the attachment and the part itself. This was our drawing of the fillet. I'm going to start over on that drawing. This here is what the fillet weld itself looked like. And we already analyzed the weld and checked that on this plane, the throat, it was fine using the electrodes properties. Now let's start by analyzing this attachment here. So we want to check the stress there at that attachment. What kind of stress is that? Well, the normal to that surface, 
is in the same direction as the load. They're parallel, so this is going to be a normal stress because the load is in the same direction as the surface normal. So sigma, we want to keep less than or equal to 0 0.6 times Sy, where this is of the base metal. Our base metal is 1018 cold drawn steel, so let's take a look at those properties. The yield strength for 1018 is 54 KSI, but again, the weld could have annealed the metal, so we need to use the hot rolled properties, 32 KSI. So SY in this case, we're going to use 32 KSI. The sigma here, that is a force uniformly distributed over an area. We can make that same assumption. What's our area here? Well, this here was a quarter inch. This is the uh, same as the leg size of the weld, H, multiplied by its length, L. So this is just HL. And our load P here is this 10 kips here. All right, so let's calculate that out. That is 10 kips, so 10,000 pounds, divided by H is 0 0.25 times L, that was 2 inches. So that's 10,000 divided by 0.5. That's 20 KSI. And we want to see if that is less than or equal to 0 0.6 times 32 KSI, which is 19.2 KSI. So even though we got our weld to work out, we were fine here. We had, uh, by using the E100 series of electrodes, the weld was strong enough, but our attachment is going to fail. So for this, we're just going to do analysis. We're not going to change the design of the part. Uh, it looks like, well, what we probably would want to do, we can just talk about it. We won't reanalyze. But in addition to this transverse weld, maybe what we're going to want to do is add some parallel welds here. That's going to increase the total amount of surface area that's carrying uh, that load between these two parts, and so that should help us solve our problem. Now the second interface that we should analyze is this one, and the surface normal of that is up and down, which is perpendicular to the direction of the applied load, and so we have a shear stress there. So now we have a tau, and that's equal to the load, 10 kips, divided by the area. It's the same as, as before. It turns out the area is also h, the leg size, multiplied by the length, l. So it's of the same magnitude as we have here, so it's 20 ksi. And we want to see, is that less than or equal to, we need to remember from those tips, or you can get it from this table, shear stress on base metal should not exceed 0.4 times the yield strength of the base metal. So 0 0.4 times Sy. Is it less than or equal to 0.4 times Sy? Well, it wasn't less than or equal to 0 0.6 times Sy. So I think that uh, whatever that is, we're going to have a problem. So 0 0.4 times 32 is 12.8 KSI. So finally, we need to analyze our part. Well, this is of constant cross-section throughout. It is a load that's simple tension uniaxial tension, so we can take any cross-section really, and we say, well, this is far away from it, so uh, this is, first of all, this is a normal stress on this cross-section because the surface normal here is parallel to the load, and so we get sigma is equal to P over A. It's just the same 20 KSI that we've had before, but we need to make sure that this is less than or equal to 0 0.6 times the yield strength of the base metal. Now we're far away from the heat affected zone, so we get to consider the full yield strength of the metal. And in this case, it's cold drawn, so it's 54 KSI. So this is equal to 0 0.6 times 54, which is 32.4 KSI. And so at least this checks out. And it's important that we check it as well, because it's possible that, yeah, we've increased, we could have increased uh, the weld attachment area by, you know, extending the fillet out further on this part, or maybe we could have solved both problems that we had also with this one. We could have added parallel fillet welds on either side, but maybe the part was going to fail, and so that doesn't do us any good to have really strong attachments and an acceptable weld if the part fails.
So those are the things you need to check out. In addition to making sure that the weld material doesn't fail, you also need to make sure that the attachments are okay. Uh, normal stresses, you need to compare to 0.6 times the yield strength of the base metal because it's, you know, there is filler metal in there, but you can't assume that that's the, the strength. It actually needs to be the yield strength of the base metal there. And you need to assume that it's been annealed by the process of welding. So using those reduced hot rolled properties, you need to analyze attachments uh, for shear stresses. They need to stay less than 0.4 times the yield strength of the base metal annealed properties. And you also need to analyze the rest of the base metal far away from the location of the weld. Make sure that it's safe as well.